All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be jumping into the um, first of a few days that we're going to be spending on doing geometric proofs. Now, you should have been able to pick up a calendar on Moodle. Um, we're going to spend a day on just kind of introduction of general geometric proofs, what it looks like to prove something uh, geometrically. We'll jump into some chapter three uh, when we're looking at for example, uh, corresponding angles, um, several congruent types of angles, some angles that add up to 180, like same side interior angles. What can you do with pairs of angles and lines, etc.? And then we're going to get into some triangle congruence. And this is the congruence that you're going to see. I mean, every, every single geometry uh, curriculum has triangle congruence that you end up uh, working with. So we'll be doing that, doing a little bit of things on Khan Academy, some, uh, some things with Chapter 4. Jump into review day, and our proofs exam is coming up pretty quickly here, just before winter break. So that's going to go um, that's going to go pretty quickly. This unit is actually not a long one; looks like a full five days of material, a review day, and then a proofs exam. It's going to go pretty quickly here. So jumping right into it, um, over the last several weeks here. Um, the last several months, we've had several reasons we, of why we can prove certain things. And um, whether you understood them as reasons for proofs or not, um, there are several things we've gone over, like definitions of complementary and supplementary, that the angles add up to 90 or 180. Um, definition of congruence, that two shapes are the same size and shape. Um, Substitution property of congruence, essentially that if you have angle A and B that are congruent to each other, um, you can substitute angle A in for angle B pretty readily. Other things we've seen are things like bisector, cutting something in half, linear pair, um, two things that are supplementary and adjacent. Um, and we, we have a number of postulates here, a few that I filled out and a few that I haven't. I'm th this is available online if you if you want. Um, you can easily look in a book and find any of these postulates and um, get a good definition and a, a picture explaining what exactly those postulates are and theorems are if you don't remember them. We will be using those theorems and whatnot to prove several statements here today. So first off, going into um, going into a few proofs, let's, let's just jump right in. For a first proof, it's going to be our first proof that we're going to do this course. Suppose that angle A and B are complementary to each other. Remember, that means that they add up to 90 degrees. And angle A and C are congruent. I'm going to go ahead and mark that off with a couple of red marks showing that they are congruent to one another. Prove that B and C are complementary. That's what we want to do. We want to prove that B and C are complementary. Now. Let's first take a look at this problem and see if it seems reasonable. All right, if these two angles are or are complementary to each other, they add up to 90 together, and these two are the same size, does it make sense that these two would also add up to 90? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Why does it make sense? Because you could just take this angle C, replace this angle A, because they're the same size, and they be complementary because A and B are complementary, right? So the um, saying that verbally is pretty straightforward. Putting that into a proper proof is sometimes a little more, um, a little more difficult, but I'll show you the basic steps here. Number one, we're going to list our givens. All right, essentially we're going to take this top piece and list it right there. So angle A and I apologize for writing with a mouse, it never looks good. Angle A and angle B are complementary. So that's the first thing we know. We also know angle A is congruent to angle B. All right, how do we know each of those things? Well, we know those things because they're given information. We were told that initially, so we're going to go ahead and go with it. Number two, what can we say about that? Well, I'm going to actually type a few things so that it actually looks good. A and B are complementary to each other. That means that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B 
equals 90. They're going to add up to 90 degrees. How do we know that? That's the, just the definition of complementary. The definition of complementary guarantees us that these two angles are going to add up to 90 degrees together. Well, as a step three, I'll go and put step three in green. Step three, measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B is equal to 90. Now, how do I know that? I know that because angle A and angle C are congruent. So I'm going to replace A with C. I'm essentially just going to do substitution. It's called the substitution property of equality or property of congruence. Substitu substitution property of equality or property of congruence. And then for number four here, last step, I always want to repeat my goal. Angle B and angle C are complementary. How do we know that? Well, they add up to 90 degrees together. They add up to 90 degrees together, so for a reason I can say definition of complementary. Again, definition of complementary says that they've got to be the they've got to be complementary to each other. They add up to 90. So here we have the general structure that we're going to see in our proofs. Um, every single proof is going to have a series of statements that you're going to make, followed by reasons for why you're allowed to make those statements. It's called a two-column proof. They're pretty common in geometry. And you're always going to start your proofs with your given information. And then you're going to go on and um, say a few things that back your argument up that, yes, this conclusion is a true statement. All right. I'm going to leave this second one for you to do if you'd like. Feel free to pause the video and give that a shot. Um, but it's pretty clear to see if 1 and 2 are supplementary, if these two are supplementary to each other, and 2 and 3 are supplementary, that 1 needs to be the same size as 3. I'll leave you to that. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I can definitely walk you through farther on that one. Looking at a couple more proofs exercises, suppose AC is congruent to BD in this diagram. I'm going to go ahead and mark that off. AC, this distance, is congruent to BD that distance. Okay, the two blue segments are congruent. I want to prove that AB is congruent to CD. AB is congruent to CD. I want to prove that those two smaller segments are congruent. Well, let's first ask ourselves, is that a reasonable statement? They certainly look like they're about the same size. This distance looks like it's about the same size as that distance. Can we actually say for sure that that's the case? Yes, absolutely, and here's why. These two blue segments are congruent. If we just cut out this BD segment completely that they both have, then what's remaining has to be congruent to each other. That part remaining, that part remaining have to be congruent to each other. So that's verbally how we're going to prove this argument. Um, doing it with a two-column proof so that we're absolutely sure. We're going to start out again with our givens. AC is congruent to BD. How do we know that? Well, we know that's because they are just given to us. They are given statements. All right, switching over here. Now, again, we said that... Um, the blue segments are congruent. I'm going to go ahead and write that out as geometrically AC equals BD. How do we know that? Well, just definition of congruence. Definition of congruence, they've got to be the same size as each other. All right. Um, we can go ahead and do the segment addition postulate. Now I'm going to write this out here because I have a lot to type. Um, I can say that AB plus BC is equal to AC. And I can also say that BC plus CD is equal to BD. Now, what did I just do there? AB plus BC equals AC. That statement is just saying this segment plus this segment AB plus BC is equal to the whole segment, which is a true statement. Just add up two segments together. It's just like adding numbers. This small bit plus this small bit makes up the whole thing. 
I know that because of the segment edition postulate. Now, I'm, re I'm relying on several of the postulates and theorems that are on that previous sheet that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Please refer back to that sheet if you have questions as to what I'm actually saying there. Um, but segment addition postulate is something you can look up. I think that's in chapter 1.2, maybe somewhere around there. It's uh, pretty early on in the book. Now, here's where the magic's going to happen. I see that BC is in both of our equations. Because that's the case, um, because that's the case, I can rewrite each of these equations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that in green. This first equation, I'm going to say BC is equal to AC minus AB. All right. All I did was subtracted AB to both sides. Subtracted AB to both sides of this first equation. All right. A, B to both sides of that first equation. And then the second equation is going to follow suit. I could say that B, C is equal to um, a B, D minus a C, D. All right. And what I'm doing there, um, that's the subtraction property of equality. Subtraction property of equality just says I can subtract the same thing on both sides. Um, with that second one, I was just subtracting C, D on both sides. Now I'm running out of room here a little bit, um, so I'm going to go ahead and print screen. Let's let's see if this works. I'd like to ideally continue on that same note. Here we go. Good. So continuing on that same note here. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. Get rid of all this. Hopefully you can still see that. Um, I want to continue proving that this is actually a true statement. Remember, I have to prove that AB is congruent to AC. Well, here's what I'm going to do next. Using a red marker here, I'm going to say that since BC is equal to the top equation, BC is equal to the bottom equation, the bottom expression, I'm going to say that they're equal to each other, AC minus AB is equal to BD minus CD. All right. Um, that's just substitution right there. I can use this fact right here, AC is equal to BD, to do a little more substitution even. I'm going to do another step of substitution. AC minus AB is equal to, rather than writing BD, I'm just going to write AC again. All right. On both sides of this equation, for my next step, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel AC and AC. All right, AC and AC are going to cancel. That's going to leave us with just negative AB equals negative CD, or AB is equal to CD, just doing some algebra. So for this last step here, 6, um, I can subtract on both sides by the subtraction, um, uh, subtraction property of equality. And I'm also using the just simplification. So finally, I know that AB is, con AB is equal to CD. All right, AB is equal to CD. So finally, I'm going to write this in orange. I apologize because this isn't going to show up too well over my taskbar, but I'm going to write this in orange. Finally, I can say that for number seven, AB is congruent to CD. So I'm going to go ahead and draw lines over both this. AB is congruent to CD, which is what we want in the end. And for number seven, I'm going to say that's because of the just definition of congruence. If we have two things that are the same size, same shape, then we can say they're definitely congruent to each other. So it's kind of a roundabout way of doing that. But um, overall, we, again, had the same structure. We started out with our given information. 
And from our given information, we did a little bit of algebra. And then at the very end, we went ahead and restated what we'd wanted to find and why we were allowed to find it. Let's look at this last one. I'm going to leave this last one up for you to do as well. If you're having trouble with these proofs, I know the, um, the learning curve for proofs is a little high. Um, definitely give me a, shoot me an email, talk to me after school. We can definitely talk through them. I'm going to post a few other videos in the same light. So if you want to see some more examples on proofs, I will definitely post some more videos related to proofs. As always, if you have any questions, email me, let me know. Have a delightful day.